All right, welcome to a video for activity 1.1.4 for computer science principles. Uh, I wanted to take this moment to just go ahead and get you guys some instructional type videos so that way you don't have to rely on me uh, after you raise your hand or anything along those lines. You can just kind of move forward and everything's fine. So what we're going to do here, we're inside of the activity here. And let's just kind of explain what's going on here and kind of see what it is. So we're talking about zero iteration conditionals and infinite loops. Think about an infinite loop just being something that continues to go on and on and on and on, uh, never, ever stopping. You'll see an example of that here in a second. Um, so what I like about these little sections of code and these windows is we can still run this and we can still see some how things work okay so like for instance this guy is just he's going to bring up uh, a square and it's going to be colored salmon now it says line is equal to five okay the value of the line starts at five cool so while the value of the line is less than five which it never is in this case right because we're we're saying the line starts at five then something is supposed to happen so it's supposed to do a uh, pin down a circle pin up, forward 20, and then line is equal to line plus one. Okay, well, that's never going to happen for us because we've set line equal to five before the while loop, okay? So nothing's ever going to happen there. You're supposed to tell me a little bit about why that isn't ever going to happen, okay? So now it says modify the code so that it draws five circles. So with line still equal to five, this code here, Okay, is the same code here. Now it wants to, you to modify the code so that it will draw the five circles. Okay, well, I'm just going to simply change this five here to a zero, and I'm going to go ahead and hit run. Okay, which is going to go ahead and give me my five circles. Okay, because, I, because the scoreboard or line is set to zero or blank or nothing, however you want to look at that, it's able to do the while loop until we get to five because I have line is equal to line plus one. Okay. So that's how the while loop works. And we have to set the line equal to something. Okay. Or the scoreboard equal to something. So now it says run the program. And, and this is number three, run the program and note your observations below. So we hit run and we see what happens. Okay. So we're, it's just literally going over and over over and over it's changing colors and you can kind of read through the code here and you can see what it is that it's doing so they got line is equal to six and they say while line is greater than five which it's always going to be because we have line is equal to six and down here we have line is equal to line plus one so it starts at six and then it goes to seven and eight and nine and ten so on and so on and so on because this will never go below the value of six okay or below the value of five this would be what's called an infinite loop it's just going to continue to go and you can see it's been running this whole time that i've been talking okay and they're using the modulus operator to determine what color the circles are going to be and things along those lines okay so in this box here or even on your answer sheet, if you want to answer it here and then copy and paste it, or if you want to answer it here and then take a screenshot, et cetera, et cetera, you can. Uh, but tell me what is going on. Why is it continuing to go on and on and on and on and never stopping? Okay. Do that for me. All right. So here's another example of an infinite loop. Let's just go ahead. It says here, why is the code above considered an infinite loop? Well, it's just, again, it's just going to keep going and going and going. While So line is four, while line is less than five, okay, it's just going to keep going. Okay, and it just keeps going and going and going. So the code's slightly different, but tell me why, and you can check your response right here. Then it wants you to create your own program, your own software, quote-unquote, that is a zero iteration loop and infinite loop, okay? So give me something similar to that here in number three, okay? In number two, but 
not exactly the same. Like maybe, maybe it's not, uh, maybe it does something different than, you know, creating those circles. Okay. So do that for me. And you can do that in here. Actually, I'd probably prefer that you go ahead and do that inside of Visual Studio Code. And then give me a screenshot of it. So then it talk, starts to talk about my, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay. And all this good stuff. Okay. And how math operators work inside of the Python programming language. Okay. So you can kind of see here how all of this is going to work to get us down to an answer of 24. Okay. Now they start talking about the modulus here. So now we have all of this with the modulus right here in the middle. And you got to see how it starts getting down further and further and further. There's zero and then zero multiplied by anything, of course, is zero. Okay. So this says examine the two programs that follow. Use arithmetic, arithmetic, ugh, arithmetic operators and the same numbers to move the turtle object. So you can kind of see how the turtle moves to the left there in this one. Okay, I'll, I'll remix that or I'll kind of reset that here. Moves over to the left, starts here in the middle, moves to the left. Notice the operators are very similar here. Okay, we are adding some parentheses in here that make things operate just a little bit differently. So when I hit play on the second one, it moves to the right at a much bigger pace as well, or much bigger spacing. So it says, use your knowledge of mathematical operators to write the following algorithm. Ask a user to enter two numbers, determines if the first number is evenly divisible by the second number. Recall that the not compares an inequality, which not would be these guys right here, an explanation point and an equal sign. And then it repeats A and B until the numbers are evenly divisible. Okay, and you're gonna go ahead and do that there. All right, looking again here at number six. So let's take a look here. They kind of give us a nice little shell of a program. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna copy this on into a Visual Studio document. So, I got to make sure that I have my file open, or I'm sorry, my folder open to where I want it to be opened to. I'm just showing you guys this so that way you know how it is and things along those lines. Okay. So, new doc. All right. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to paste in that little shell of a program that I have. I'm going to go ahead and switch and save this. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a Python doc. Okay, and this will be, and it did bring in a name there already, but I'm going to name it 1.1.4, and I'm just going to do number six here. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and that should be going automatically on into my folder that I want it to go into. Oh, it did not. It might be because I have another screen of Visual Studio Code open. Uh, so that might be what's going on. That's okay. So what I like about this is that it gives us the shell here. So it says, hey, get two numbers from the user. And then let's create a while loop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's actually quite intuitive and interactive. Okay. So what I'm going to do is the program wants us to have two numbers divisible. So it asks for the two numbers, determine if the first is evenly divisible by the second. Um, and we're going to use the not operator for this and then repeats A and B until we get that going on. Okay. So to get the numbers, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use a variable called top. And so top is going to be equal to the integer of the input from the user and i'm just going to keep this real simple so top is equal to the integer of the user's input and then i'm going to tell the user hey enter your top number all right say so i'm going to go ahead and go to the bottom and it's going to be the same thing
Okay. So now what it says to do is this little shell here uh, is to create a while loop. So while loop while the numbers uh, are not divisible, the remainder is, is zero. So what that looks like for us then is creating a while loop. And I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be while top modulus of the bottom is not equal to zero, I want things to happen, okay? So first off, it says we need to inform the user of the result. So we need to print something, okay? Print is one of those things that kind of allows things to, to be displayed in the bottom screen. So the it's gonna be your, and I would really like to get rid of that, okay. While your, I'm sorry, print your top number is not evenly divisible by your bottom. Try again. Uh, there's certain little things that trigger uh, those little windows to pop up and they kind of drive me mad every once in a while. Okay, so we told the user now that of the result, okay? So now what we have to do is we have to tell them that we, we have to tell the user that we are going to go ahead and get more input from them. So we while the, the, the top is not divisible by the bottom evenly, okay? So if we had five divided by two, there would obviously be a remainder. So uh, we need to get the user input again so it's going to be, again, top is equal to the input. Kind of the same thing of what we had with the lines of code up here. And we can just copy that on it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I started typing it, but I'm going to go ahead and copy it in. The same goes for here. All right. So then we need to inform the the user again. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to go ahead and let's let's do this. This will help us a little bit see things. Now we go ahead and we give them the output whenever it is actually divisible. So if it actually were to be true, it to be zero. So four divided by two has a remainder of zero. If that were to be true, we want it to print results. So that would be your number top number. If I could type right, that'd be oh, I did type right. Early. My fingers are not warmed up. So let's see what happens when I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So control S. I'm going to run my program, okay? And if you can see this on the bottom here, okay, it says, hey, enter your top number. So if I wanted to do, if I wanted to keep this going, I'm going to do seven and I'm going to divide seven by two, okay? So it says your top number is not evenly divisible by your bottom number. Try again. So that part worked. Well, now let's see if the actual true part of it works. So let's just do four divided by two. And I have a little bit of an error there, it looks like. Doesn't like something. So let's take a look at what that is. It doesn't like line 11. Let's see if I can figure out why. So I went back and ran my code again and it ran fine. So anyways, everything's fine. Okay, so that's number six. So I'd, if I were you, I'd go ahead and take a screenshot of that and put that onto uh, your document. So then it gets into spinning design with loops. And I'll probably get through number nine and call it a day here on this video that you should be able to move forward from there, okay? So there's a college board thing you can read through right here. So it says examine number seven, examine the code. Can you guess what it does? 
So you can kind of read through this and you can hit play and, and give me a little thing of what you think it does. I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. And you can kind of see that it creates a spiral and it changes colors and things along those lines. So, what did you observe? Check your answer. Okay, so now it says modify the program to meet the following criteria. Every fifth and tenth circle changes color. The spiral is tighter and circles are closer together and fills the screen without going off the screen or overlapping. It fills the screen without going off screen or overlapping. Okay, so... Let's take a look at that real quick. So let's look, and let's just go ahead and copy and paste this on into a new doc inside of VS Code. So file new. Let's paste it. Okay, it's already recognizing what we need it to recognize, but I do need to save this. inside of my folder and I need this to be one 1.4 and I'm going to name this seven whoops, underscore seven through nine I'm going to call this teacher edition as I already have this done I'm just kind of reiterating some things so what we can see is it brings in the library, Turtle's going to do some things, and we have spiral spacing of zero. So it says while spacing is less than 80, a lot of things happen, right? It draws circles, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what we need to do, again, is every fifth and tenth circle, okay? Well, if you look here, every 18th and 36th circle changes color. So if I wanna change colors of the fifth and 10th circles, all I would need to do then hopefully would be to change this to five, the 18 to five and this to 10. Okay, so let's see what happens when I control S save and then I run it. Okay, so it's changing every fifth and every 10th. Okay, now notice I haven't done anything yet with the, um, the spiral spacing, okay? So I, I was able to change the colors successfully. Okay, now the spiral needs to become tighter, and we're going to fill the screen more. All right, so if I want that spiral spacing to be a little bit tighter, what if I were to change this to maybe 60? Control S, save. Let's see what happens. That seems a little bit tighter. A little bit. Or let's mess with this number here and take that down to two. Control S to save. That is tighter right there, for sure. Okay. Let's see what it looks like with 70. I'm just kind of playing with numbers here. I kind of like that one right there. Okay. So that gets us through number nine. So again, what I changed was this line. My control. I changed that line. I changed a number in this line. And I changed a number in this line in this line okay so you play around with those numbers and you get the results that you want 